Hey guys, welcome back. I just bought a 2008 Ford F-250 with the 6.4 liter power stroke. I bought it with low compression and one cylinder. We thought it was gonna have a damaged piston. Um, it ended up having one broken rocker arm and all the other rocker arms were extremely worn out. After that, it passed a relative compression check with the IDS, but I don't know what kind of maintenance has been done to this truck. It was five quarts low on oil, um, so there's no lube sticker. I don't know how far it's been. I just topped it up. We'll change the oil at a later date because I'm actually gonna do an engine flush on this. Um, the fuel system. I don't want to assume that they were running good fuel. I haven't changed the filters, although I do have new filters for it. But what I wanna do today is look at the injector balance rates. We wanna look and see if one injector is adding more fuel than the others or the computer is adding fuel or taking fuel away. Now, this isn't a good test to do if there's an engine mechanical problem because the computer will try to mask that problem by adding or subtracting fuel. Relative compression check before when the cylinder had low compression was way low on cylinder six and a little bit low on cylinder eight after fixing six, both of them went back to zero. Everything's, everything's within 1% of each other on the relative compression check, um, or depending on which you do. If you do it several times, you'll get varying numbers, but typically they're all at 0% difference. So we're gonna plug the scan tool in, um, check it for engine codes, see if there's anything in there. I have driven it maybe 50 miles. Um, when I filled up the tank about 15 miles ago, I did put the BG 244K in there. Um, it's the injector cleaner designed for diesels. It's part of a flushing package. The other one is injector cleaner. So if the injector balance rates are off quite a bit, um, I will run some injector cleaner through it. After I run that through it, I'll change the primary and secondary fuel filter. I kind of have mixed emotions about when to change the fuel filter, but since they're so, if they were cheap, I would do it twice. Since they're kind of pricey, um, I'm gonna run the injector cleaner first through the system and then we'll change them. And I wanna do that because if anything is built up in the lines and that injector cleaner bring, knocks that stuff loose, hopefully the filters will catch it. And I don't wanna put new filters in and dirty them up right away. So right off the bat, I see a code for cruise control, P0578 cruise control malfunction, A circuit stuck. That should be resolved now that we have a new clock spring in there. Um, no drivability codes. Still has not completed all the drive cycles. Airbag code should be fixed now as well. And I was programming some new keys, so we have a PATS code in there. Um, it has completed the misfire fuel system. Comprehensive component, it has not run the monitor for EGR or catalyst. So we're, we're gonna wanna go into the engine system. Ignition's off, we'll go back to key on. I'm gonna go ahead and start the truck up. Now let's go to data first and just see how warm our engine is. It looks like the temperature has dropped just a little bit. So I'm just looking for coolant temp or oil temp. Engine coolant temp, we're at 160 degrees. Um, so we'll let it continue to idle here. Uh, we'll check the balance rates. They may vary slightly between now and fully warmed up, but typically, you know, once you're 140 degrees, they're not gonna change much. We'll scroll down here a little bit further. And we want to get down to individual injector fuel trims. We should be pretty close here. Okay, so short term fuel trims. Um, cylinder one's at zero, two is at 11, three is at negative two, four is zero, five is negative three. Six is zero, seven zero, eight zero. 
So it looks like it's adding quite a bit of fuel for cylinder number two. That injector could be a little bit restricted. Um, because that one's restricted, you know, we may be causing a few other issues in here. These other ones may be leaking or dripping a little bit, and that's why it's taking fuel away. Um, so I think what we'll do is, you know, we'll de we're definitely gonna clean these injectors and monitor what the changes are immediately after the cleaning, and then maybe do a follow-up video to see how the long-term of this injector cleaning has held up. Let's go back and let's go to the power balance. So functional test. We wanna go down here to power balance. This is almost like a misfire monitor, but it's gonna give us a chart across the screen and it's gonna show us if any of the cylinders are deviating from the other cylinders. Now with this test, we could uh, kill individual injectors, but right now the line is pretty flat all the way across. And that's because of the, the injector compensation. Um, it's adding some extra fuel to cylinder number two to make it run smoothly compared to all the other ones. Now, sometimes it's a good idea to drop it down into gear and just see if there's any fluctuation. We have some minor changes there. Um, cylinder two is a little high. And I mean, but everything else is pretty well flat. Let's go back to park. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disable the fuel compensation strategy. And now we can start to see some slight deviations. Now it put the fuel trim back to zero for all the injectors. We see cylinder number two is down just a tiny bit. Cylinder three and five are up just a tiny bit. We'll put it in gear, see if any of that changes. So it looks like the spread gets just a tiny bit bigger. Um, two drops a little bit further, three and five jump up a little bit further. So we are seeing some, some slight variations in the way this engine is running. We can re-enable that fuel strategy. The line goes back to flat. So I say we, uh, we go ahead and flush out these injectors and see if we see an improvement. Hopefully it's not too windy out here. Um, I'm at home, it's on the weekend. So I figured I'd bring the stuff home to uh, to try and do this while I have some downtime. Um, so this is the BG injection flush kit. We have a big bottle. Uh, it looks like we still have a little bit of fluid in it from the last vehicle. This has a couple ways of working. Um, you can hook up air to it. So if you're hooking, if you're going after the fuel pump and you just disable the fuel pump or if you loop the fuel pump, um, you can apply air pressure to this and force feed it to the engine in place of that fuel pump or in this case what i plan on doing because i don't have a you know compressor set up at home right now um, i'm going to go on the tank side of the fuel conditioning unit or the fuel pump on this vehicle and it's going to just pull from this through that fuel pump through the filters through the lines to the engine and it's going to return back to this as well um, there is a filter in the bottom of this. Um, you get a new filter with every kit. I normally don't change it out except for every um, three or four kits, depending on the vehicle I'm doing. If it's a power stroke and there's a lot of oil contamination in the fuel or someone's been running bio diesel or something, then I will change it. Um, but the last one, we only had a single line hooked up. We weren't even looping through it. Um, so I'm not gonna worry about changing that filter. There are a couple of hoses. I should probably put my gloves on now because my hands are gonna stink like diesel. Um, a couple of hoses that will hook up to this and hook up to that system. And then we have another compartment full of all the different adapters we may need. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, if I have the right tools, I hope I do, um, crawl underneath the truck. We're gonna disconnect the fuel lines on the inlet of that fuel pump hook this unit up, we'll fill it up, and then we'll start the truck and let it run. Now, this will get slightly diluted because there's gonna be some diesel fuel in the fuel conditioning unit, diesel fuel up on the engine in the secondary filter, um, but for the most part, it's gonna run this through there and do a pretty good job of cleaning out those injectors.
and hopefully smooth out our balance rates a little bit. Okay, so I have the apparatus set up. I have the vent open. Since we're not injecting air, I want the vent open so I don't create a vacuum as this drains. Um, I don't want to be starving the frame rail pump. At the same time, I don't want this to start heating up um, from the return fuel and building up pressure, so I have the vent open. If we were force feeding it without a pump, that would be closed, I'd have air connected here. I opened the valve on the red hose that is going to the inlet of my fuel pump. Um, we can start to see some bubbles come up here as it's purging a little bit of air out of the lines. I'm gonna cycle the key a couple times. Um, we shouldn't have to worry about it since this has the conditioning unit that is full of fuel already. Um, I didn't lose that much fuel, but we'll cycle the key. We see lots of air bubbles. If we cycle it a couple of times, uh, most of those air bubbles should disappear. So I'm no longer seeing air bubbles in the tank. We'll go ahead and start it up. We might get a little bit of air when we start it up just because it shakes stuff around. Now this is gonna take quite a while. So I'm gonna shut the camera off. We'll let this run. Once this is done, we'll hook, I'll hook up the fuel lines back to the fuel pump. I'll run it for a little bit until we are running back on diesel fuel. Um, I may take it around the block just to uh, verify that. And then we'll double check the balance rates. So last night it got a little too dark to film. It took about 40 minutes for the flush chemical to run through the engine at an idle. Um, the fuel trims for individual cylinders was kind of all over the place initially um, as you know, some of that com chemical was still in the fuel system. This morning I fired it up, I drove it about 20 miles and I'll post the uh, fuel trim numbers up on the screen here, but we notice that all of the cylinders are no longer close to zero. They're all kind of fluctuating a little bit, which is fine. Um, you know, some of those you'd think, well, now I affected other cylinders, but our minimum maximum is a lot closer. Um, cylinder two was at positive 11, uh, which was kind of high. I think we had one other cylinder that was at negative six uh, initially. I'll post that up right now as well. And then on our current ones, um, all of them, our min max is a lot closer. So even though they're fluctuating off of the zero line a little bit, we don't have as drastic of a change between our low and our high. They're all just a little bit off. Um, I'll continue to monitor it as I drive it and see if the numbers hold out. We still have the 244K in the tank. Um, so I'll probably you know, not fill up the tank until I get down to about a quarter tank. We'll run that stuff through. Um, the more you dilute it, it stays in the system longer that way, but it's a little, uh, it's less concentrated, has less effect. So once we determine if, you know, this chemical treatment is a solution for getting the fuel trims to even out a little bit, clean out the injectors and make things run a little bit smoother, um, then maybe you guys can decide whether or not you want to justify spending the money on having a shop do that type of chemical clean to your injectors. Otherwise, you can always add stuff to the tank. Um, you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to mix chemicals. But the injector cleaner that I ran through at the fuel pump and ran it straight to the engine was a little more concentrated. Um, it's not designed for extended use. It's not designed to be driven. You know, while using that as a fuel, it's really just designed to sit there and idle and slowly work through the injectors, loosen up any deposits that are in there and flush them out. Um, next thing I will do is I need to change the fuel filters, but I'll probably do that down at the shop because it's about 29 degrees outside right now. It's a little bit cold and I don't really feel like laying on the ground again and getting all dirty. So since it might be a while before I get enough miles on it to find out if those numbers you know, did smooth out or stayed close to zero. You know, it could be a couple weeks, maybe a month. But in the meantime, let me know what you guys are using for diesel treatments, whether it's just an additive you put in your tank, whether you're pulling the filter housing off and pouring in some, some fuel straight or some cleaner straight into the housing. I know some guys do that with like diesel 911 or whatever cleaner of choice they have. Whenever they do their filter, they'll put it straight into that um, filter housing and so it's a little more concentrated than putting it in the tank. That has worked well for quite a few people, but at the same time, you know, some of that may get returned back to the tank since we're not running in a closed loop system that's up front. They're, 
using a fuel tank as part of the closed loop system. So it will get diluted slightly. But let me know down below what you've tried, what you've had good luck with. And I don't even know what our prices are for the diesel injection flush. It's been so long since I've sold one. I'll have to uh, look it up and see how much the chemicals cost. So questions or comments, put those down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.